Hi everyone, I'm Patricio Guerra. Today I'm going to show you this painting. Uh, this is the third one from a series of paintings that are about Jokai. Jokai are spirits, creatures and ghosts from the Japanese folklore. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm going to show you how I did this painting, that is Hania. Hania is meant to be a female character, uh, characterized by jealousy. Um, for this character I'm using the base of the body of a male uh, to give it more contrast to the mask. Uh, my idea is to draw a mask on top of it to give the illusion of uh, being this creature or this monster. Uh, for this I'm going in the sketch process to put all the features on top of it and then I'm going to readjust everything to match the proportions to give this threatening look that this monster have. Um, as you can see now I'm placing the teeth, the, the fan and the jaw and all these char uh, characteristics features and especially I'm going to put a lot of attention to the eyes and the eyebrows. This character has these eyebrows that are in the middle or in the center of the face pointing downwards while the outside of the eyebrows are facing upwards. It give, gives an, a strange look between tragic, sad and threatening at the same time if you take him look or take in consideration the horns and the fans and how the color of the skin is. In this painting, um, as you can see, I'm doing the blocking mainly with a straight lines. I'm using very little uh, curvy lines or circles or very fluid strokes. This will be seen in the inking part of the process. Part of my goal is to aim for a traditional look similar to the ukiyo-e style from the Japanese artists. I'm not going to replicate exactly the style but I'm going to use it as a reference so I want to have somehow a result where people can relate to that style while I'm adding my own uh, part of my own art to this illustration or to this painting. For the inking I'm trying to get as clean lines as possible doing as much of as much as I can with very few strokes and trying to maintain very dynamic strokes to get a different result from what we have in the sketch. As you can see, I'm sometimes doing two or three times the same line or I'm modifying the line to get some movement. Additional to the main lines, I'm adding tiny uh, little marks or tiny little strokes. These I'm doing with the purpose to give some kind of roughness and extra detail on the surface Without going too deep, I'm not trying to get a cross hatching or anything like that. I'm just giving a few lines in particular spots to give that illusion of the roughness of the skin and, and the flesh. For the composition, I'm going to focus more on the face of the character. That's why uh, you can see this is our main element. It's the biggest element and it's not exactly in the center but it's very close to the center. To give an idea of the kind of color palette that I want to use I start putting in the background uh, something a bit yellow but the colors are not um, exactly saturated. Uh, they are actually a bit uh, although I, they are lighter, they are a bit transparent. These give us the illusion of this Chinese type of ink that these guys used to use. And these will help us to blend and maintain all the colors together. 
although we are going to do some kind of color correction later on you'll see that the principle or the idea behind uh, the use of color is similar in all the painting right now we are doing the blocking of the colors these are not the final colors it's just to have a rough idea of what the colors could be and also help it helps me to create layer masks that I'm going to use to paint on top of it and then I don't have to be worried about going out of the edges and spending time just fixing things. This is um, this part is a base color something like a local color for the different parts of the character um, I'm trying although I'm putting a base one base color I'm trying to maintain some kind of variation on it uh, changing a little bit the hues or a little bit the saturation but not too much something that will blend in uh, after this we are going to try to put uh, all the shadows that we can recognize at this stage in a very rough way we are not going to go in detail very deep right now we are trying to work the entire piece as one uh, moving everything together later on we are going to reinforce all these lights and shadows that we are going to have something characteristic from this ukiyo -e style is that the colors are mainly flat colors and the illusion of uh, perspective, depth or light is get with little variations but if you see inside of the shadows or inside of the lights the colors are mainly flat the ones that are being used but when they are put together they work as a whole piece to give these impressions As you can see, I'm reinforcing some of the lines that were done in the inking part of the process um, with a little piece of a darker color from the uh, color that is as a local color or as a base color. This gives us this illusion of roughness, uh, like if something is in there. And I try to do that and combine between lights and shadows so we have something more interesting to look at while I do that I'll try to keep uh, everything clean while I put little sad differences in the color to give some detail as you can see in the fan or in the horns of the character the lining of the entire picture is not really decided yet uh, this is something that will take uh, more time later on. Right now I'm trying to get a color that is more pleasing to my purpose, uh, especially for the mask. In theory the character is meant to be evil. That's why I thought that maybe a different type of color, a darker version of the color probably, or a purple uh, mask will give us the uh, desired effect. This will help to create a lot of contrast between the background and also between the flesh of the the color of the flesh of this character. As you can see, we are aiming, uh, we are going to have at the end um, something a bit reddish, uh, a bit uh, purple, like a cold magenta uh, or magenta for the mask. And we'll try to make some kind of subtle variation between uh, the mask and the rest of the body, like the neck. The lining was a bit difficult to decide for this painting. Um, originally I was trying to get something like a source of light is behind an object that is just letting through little rays of light to get a more dramatic effect on the painting but as you can see I'm going back and forward all the time with this kind of um, 
lining effect that I at the end I didn't like it at all and I decided to change. I had to do two more tests in order to get something pleasant to my eyes. And although this didn't work, is part of the work that we have to do is more about experimenting because sometimes uh, using the tools like Photoshop, uh, the blending modes for example, this help us to see the painting in a different way to what we have in our minds and consider other options that, that probably we never thought about it but looks good at the end. Keep in mind that you can always erase and redo something if you don't like it. Just maintain the information in different layers and you will be able to go back and forward if you need it. Right now it's another failed attempt to decide the lining of this piece. And as you can see, although I was using these overlay options and the add options for, the, for blending the layers, uh, I erased them completely. Well, for the final version of the background, I decided to use a transition between a light uh, color that you see on top of it to a darker version of a magenta color, a more reddish color at the bottom of the background and including a little of reflection to give more movement like this will help me to place the focus of the eye of the viewers on the mask and, and guide the, the view from the corner, from the left, to the face. To reinforce this, we are going to use, um, we are going to include, will be better, uh, a rim light. The rim light will put, it's like cutting the edges of the character in the darker part. So this will create a lot of contrast and is going to reinforce this that the main part of the object of this painting is the mask as you can see I start with a big light but I'm going to cut all of this till we have this light only in the edges of the mask although I'm going to use this in the darker part of the of the background where it's meant to be heated, heating the light mo the most, I'm going to use the same lines, in the same light in the rest of the body to maintain the whole piece together and the style will look coherent and also will help me to revelate some of the elements or some other details that in other way would have gone forgotten. But I'm doing this in a very subtle way because I cannot have the same amount of light as in the other side of the face because then it's going to compete between them well, while my goal is to guide the viewer through the painting. The color correction is very important to have um, some variation while everything is together like with similar hues and similar saturations. Uh, something that I wanted to include in this painting at the end uh, was some kind of effect where the character blends with the background. That's why I'm going to use the layer masks from Photoshop to include some kind of dust or mist around the mm, shoulders and the torso of the character to give this illusion of um, blending in like if it's atmospheric with the background. And this is basically the illustrations guys, uh, thank you very much for watching, if you want to see more you can find more of these kind of things on Artstation, if you want to support me buying art prints you can find them on Artstation, also you can see this premium content on my Patreon account. Remember that you can get very cool things with my art on it on Redbubble and thanks guys for watching. 